by a 60-year-old man <laughs> whose knees are weak and <laughs> might slip. But I said it takes courage because you have to, you have to surrender. You have to, you have to trust as you are lowered into the water. And then, just as the water envelops you, God embraces you. God embraces you in a love that will not let you go. As family, so it is with you. God loves you and invites you to surrender your heart, to trust Him, and walk with Him in a lifelong relationship. That act of faith may be accompanied by feelings of joy, or there may be no feelings at all. In many ways, faith is a decision. I have decided to follow Jesus, says the old song. Once we've taken the step of faith and surrendered our heart to the Lord, we we begin to develop our relationship with God by getting to know His Son, Jesus Christ. We read His story in the Gospels. We learn of His teachings. We apply them to our lives. But we also get a sense of the presence of Christ with us. The hymn says it all. He walks with me, and He talks with me, and He tells me, I am His own. This is called the mystical presence of Christ. It is Jesus' promise to be with us always, manifested in our lives. In prayer, we get better and better at speaking the words of our hearts to God and listening with an ear to the gentle voice of God speaking through that still small voice to our hearts. Further, God calls us to be part of the body of Christ, church, continuing the ministry of Christ in our own time. Part of that ministry involves sharing the love of God that we feel to those who do not feel close to God. The pattern is the same as our faith experience. Develop relationships. Just as you develop your relationship with God, we must develop our relationships with other people in a natural way, not in a targeted way. Uh, when I was a Southern Baptist and uh, growing up, uh, we would target people. I'm going to get him saved, and I would just badger him, and badger him, and badger him. And uh, I've learned that's not how the Holy Spirit works. The Holy Spirit works as we develop relationships with people in a natural way. We're always developing relationships. This is important. This is a good thing. We mustn't be cloistered in the church. We must be out in the world developing relationships. Discovering stories is important. Just as I have discovered the story of Jesus, and those stories in the Gospels that are so dear to my heart, it, it is some of yours. I, I need to listen to other people's stories, too. You know, you know, people want to tell their stories. They want to. If you say to someone, uh, uh, tell me about yourself, well, often they'll, they will. <laughs> they'll tell you about things because people need to tell their stories. And, and, and it's in listening to people's stories that you can, you can hear maybe what's what's missing in their lives. And the fun part about telling stories and inviting people to tell you their story is that you get to tell them their, their story. And, and, and telling your story, telling my story, uh, God comes into the story because God is part of my story. He's part of your story. And, and, and I'm able to share with people some things that God has done in my life. And, and you know, you're able to do that too just in a quite natural way without, without forcing it. Just in the sharing of stories, in the sharing of stories, all of us who trust in the Lord, we have opportunity, you see, to share how God has touched our lives, how God has sustained us in life, how God has forgiven us, helped us along the way, given us courage and hope. It need not be difficult to share what the Lord means to you. I have walked with the Lord for 53 years. I went into that baptistry. We have a cinder block in there for short people. <laughs> and I was a short people then. And um, I, I stood up on the cinder box so people could see me. I remember that day with clarity. Somebody took a picture. I don't know. It's, it, it, it's floated around. Um, but it meant something to me. And whether you remember your baptism or not, your baptism has, has meaning. Because it's, 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 it's the symbol of your commitment to Christ, to your being a part of faith. Being a Christian. I've walked with the Lord for 53 years, and I'm ever learning new things about the Lord. 
what the Lord has in mind for me. And I've, I've made a lot of mistakes along the way, you know. But as I look back, I see, I see, I see clearly how most of those mistakes were the direct result of me not trusting the Lord when I should have. Discovering the stories of others gives you an opportunity to tell what the Lord has done for you. Now, how about you? Do you have a story? Do you have a story about what the Lord has done for you to help you overcome an obstacle? How the Lord has brought healing into your life, maybe physically or spiritually, emotionally. Or how God has given you grace or <coughs> grace in this life. <coughs> if you listen to stories, you get to tell stories. And often God gives you a story to touch somebody else's heart and draw them closer to the Lord. Lastly, we must learn to discern, to discern. To discern the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives. God's Spirit is never at rest. The Scripture says it's like the wind, always blowing and moving us hither and yon. Discerning the work of the Holy Spirit in your life is often a matter of simply opening your mind and your heart and then waiting for God to leave you with an impression, an urgent thought, an idea, a push, a push in the direction lending someone a hand and sharing your kindness and telling a story of hope, of showing love and compassion to a lost and hurting soul along the way. Look, most of us have trouble with this because it requires us to surrender and to trust over and over again, to trust in the Lord and His working in our lives. To constantly be discerning the Holy Spirit's urgings means you have to approach life in the spirit of prayer. It means that I have to give up any illusion that I have that I, I may have the answers or that I always know what to do, because I don't. I depend upon the work of the Holy Spirit, the movement of the Holy Spirit in my life. And I have learned that if I surrender to God's Spirit and trust God to lead me, it's remarkable how many times God will clearly urge me to take an action this way, or to say a word here, or to embrace, make a phone call, or to take on an attitude that perhaps I can share with someone else that will make a difference for them. When you open your heart to the working of the Holy Spirit within you, God will use you. God will use you to bring His love and grace into the lives of others. Look, back in the 50s and 60s, we had some kind of crazy idea that the ministry, He was to do all the ministry. When really the ministry is the coach, it. we're all to do ministry. We're all to share our faith. We're all to, we're all to get involved in other people's lives, to build relationships, to discover stories, to discern the Holy Spirit working in our lives as we interact with people. Our willingness to move outside of our circle of comfort and go into the zone of the unknown with nothing more than an urging from within. That's the stuff of faith. Hmm? That's the stuff of faith. It is clothing yourself with confidence in the workings of God within you and following through with something as simple as a walk across the room to say hello to someone you might not know well or if you do may need some special attention from you, may need a hug from you, may need for you to just sit with them while they go through some trouble, who may, need, who may need to hear one of those stories of faith and encouragement that you have picked up along the way through your relationship with God. Develop relationships, yes. Discover stories, yes. Discern the Holy Spirit, yes. Listen. It was the Sabbath. Jesus and his disciples were walking through the grain fields. And they were being followed by a number of people, including Pharisees, who were religious teachers who were zealous about keeping the law of Moses. One of the laws of Moses is thou shalt not work on the Sabbath. And one of the sub laws of that is thou shalt not harvest on the Sabbath. And, and Jesus' disciples, as they were walking along the grain field, were scooping up some grains off the heads of the wheat and where they're shoving them and popping the grain in their mouth and having breakfast on their way to synagogue. The Pharisees immediately stepped up and spoke to Jesus. Are you going to let your disciples do this? Can't you see they're breaking the law of the Sabbath? Jesus was not, uh, did not hesitate. Uh, he told them, no. uh, he's a David. Even King David went into the holy part of the temple and, and, and during a time of, of, of crisis took the, the bread right off the table, the bread that was being offered to the Lord, and he ate it and gave it to his companion. 
And if David did that, how much more does the Son of Man have authority? <laughs> Look, the Sabbath was not made for man. Man was made for the Sabbath. And they walked along after the Pharisees had been rebuked, they followed him. And he went into the, the, the synagogue with the, the crowd, where I've been. And, and, and the ruins are still there. And he, and he stood up before uh, the, the people. And the Pharisees came in and all sat down in the front row. And then, and then Jesus noticed a man with a withered hand. <laughs> And, 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 and the Pharisees noticed it too. And, and Jesus had been healing people, and that was okay with them, so long as he didn't heal on the Sabbath. You see, you're not supposed to do any work on the Sabbath, and healing is work. And, and, and they were very particular about that. And, and, and so Jesus saw the man with the withered hand, and he was in need, and that he needed healing in his life. So he asked him to come forward, and the man did. And, and, and Jesus looked angry at the Pharisees. I wouldn't want Jesus to look angry at me, but he looked angry at the Pharisees. <laughs> and, then he, and then he turned to the man with the withered hand and he said, stretch out your hand. And in an act of faith, the man stretched out his hand and it was made well. Pharisees, God, I know, stormed out of the synagogue of Capernaum in order to plot against Jesus. But the people received him gladly. For he brought healing. <coughs> Listen, Jesus wants to bring healing to your life today. You have withered parts that need to be stretched out before the Lord and, and, and laid at his feet. Others that you know have such and if they hear the call of Jesus, <coughs> they can find within themselves the healing that they need in their spirits and their souls, and sometimes in their bodies as well. Let's pray. Gracious God, we pray.